Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. What's better than saving for your future? Supercharging your savings with powerful tax advantages. Tax advantage accounts like the 401k and the IRA have long been among the best tools to save for your future, to save for your retirement. And they're designed with one simple strategy in mind, and that is to contribute, invest, and let your money grow. Just set it and forget it. And I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. When it comes to investing, simplicity really often wins. But here's the thing, set it and forget it does not mean check out and ignore it completely. When it comes to your finances, staying aware and informed is crucial, especially now as there's some big changes that are coming to employer-sponsored plans that you need to know about. So let's talk about these changes, including some major increases to the contribution limits thanks to the SECURE 2.0 Act. So whether you still have a long runway to retirement or whether retirement is coming up in the next handful of years, there could be some big opportunities here. The 401k is the most well-known, but certainly not the only employer-sponsored plan. And specifically, the plan types we're focusing on for this segment of the video are the 401k, the 403b, the governmental 457 plans, and the federal government's thrift savings plan, all of which share the same contribution limit. And that contribution limit for the year 2025 is a maximum of $23,500. And generally speaking, for those 50 and older, they are eligible for annual catch-up contributions of an additional $7,500. So for those 50 and older who participate in these plans, they can contribute a maximum of $31,000 into these plans on an annual basis. For those under the age of 50, 2025's contribution limit is a $500 increase from the 2024 number of $23,000. And these numbers are indexed to inflation and they tend to increase on an annual basis or increase fairly regularly, so this is to be expected. For those 50 and older, the catch-up contribution amount didn't increase. And if that were the whole story, it wouldn't be all that noteworthy. But there are some big changes to contribution limits for those at certain ages thanks to the SECURE 2.0 Act. Specifically for those who participate in these plans, there is now a higher catch-up contribution limit for employees that are age 60, 61, 62, and 63. For 2025, this catch-up contribution limit is $11,250 instead of the $7,500, which means that plan participants who are of these specific ages are eligible to contribute a total of $34,750 to their employer-sponsored retirement plan. That's a pretty significant increase, and it's because of this move that the New York Times has dubbed this the biggest change to 401 contribution rules in two decades. Now, whether or not you have a spare $34,750 in your income to set aside into these accounts, that's a whole nother story. But it is worth taking note that these contribution limits have increased fairly substantially. Let's take a moment to talk about these ages, ages 60 through 63, because I know this is a question that is going to come up. This higher limit for these selected ages is not a one-time increase for 2025. It will apply on an ongoing basis to these ages. Also, just like other contribution limits, it is indexed for inflation, so it is expected that it will increase over time. To qualify for the higher contribution limits, you must be 60, 61, 62, or 63. But let's take a moment to talk about the book ended ages. If you turn 60 in the year of 2025, whether your birthday's at the beginning of the year, or the end of the year, doesn't matter so long as you turn 60 within the year, you are eligible to contribute this higher amount. On the other hand, if you turn 64 within the year, you are no longer eligible for this higher contribution limit. You would still be eligible for the catch-up contribution limit for those 50 and older, but you are not eligible for the higher catch-up contribution limit for those age 60 to 63. So it doesn't matter if you were 63 at any point throughout the year. Once you turn 64 in that year, you are no longer eligible for the higher contribution limit. So throwing some numbers into the mix, if you turned 64 this 
this year, you would be eligible for the standard catch-up contribution limit for 2025 of $7,500 on top of the regular contribution limit of $23,500. You would not be eligible for the higher catch-up contribution limit of $11,250. Now, as to why these higher catch-up contributions are so restrictive on ages, the details weren't really given, but we can make some assumptions. For many, those early 60s, those years are really critical as they gear up for retirement before stepping away from the workforce. As in a very traditional sense, thinking about retirement as the age of 65 or what is dubbed full retirement age by Social Security of 66 or 67, depending on your birth year. So this could really give workers the opportunity to ramp up their savings before stepping away from the workforce at one of those traditional ages. Also, the pragmatic side of me would likely say that there are budget reasons as to why the IRS or Congress wouldn't want to continue what they deem to be very high contribution limits across all ages, simply because there's a cost in terms of lost government revenue when employees participate in these plans. For the traditional variety of these accounts, there's a tax revenue loss in the year in which employees contribute to these plans because they contribute pre-tax dollars. So tax revenue is not collected in that year. It's more appropriately dubbed delayed tax revenue because that can is sort of kicked down the road. On the other hand, when it comes to the Roth variety of these accounts, the government still collects a tax revenue on this income. However, by utilizing these accounts, once the employee retires and steps away from the workforce and begins to make a withdrawal from this account, there is no tax revenue due. So the government does not collect tax revenue at that time. So it's likely trying to strike a balance between encouraging people to save more while also not compromising too much revenue for the government. And what about the individual retirement account or the IRA? Well, unfortunately for the year 2025, there has not been any adjustment to the contribution limits for these plans. For the year 2025, the annual max contribution limit to both the Roth and the traditional IRA is set at $7,000 for those under the age of 50. And for those 50 and older, they are eligible to contribute an additional $1,000 in the form of a catch-up contribution. If you are contributing to a traditional IRA, income limits don't apply, but if you're a high income earner and you're contributing to a Roth IRA, you want to pay attention to those income limits. For singles earning under $150,000, full IRA contributions are allowed. A phase-out starts at $150,000 a year and no contributions are allowed once you surpass $165,000 a year in earned income. For those married and filing jointly, the income limits to pay attention to are $236,000 in order to be able to contribute the full amount and beyond $246,000 for those married and filing jointly, they would no longer be able to directly contribute to their respective Roth IRAs. It's always worth adding the distinction of not being able to directly contribute to a Roth IRA because the backdoor Roth is still an option if that is something these high income earners are interested in exploring. I do think it's unfortunate that we didn't see an increase in the contribution limits to IRAs because inflation was still happening this year in 2024. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the inflation rate thus far for this year has been 2.4%. So what this means is that plan types like the 401k have accounted for inflation and plan types like the IRA have not. I believe the primary reason behind this is simply convenience. Historically, it seems that the IRS likes to increase these contribution limits in $500 increments. And had they increased the IRA contribution by this amount, they would have outpaced inflation. And they certainly don't want to do that. Increasing these contribution limits beyond inflation results in a greater loss of tax revenue to the government. Also, it's seen as disproportionately aiding high income earners, as it is more likely that high income earners are going to be the ones who can contribute the maximum amount to these accounts. Lower and middle income earners may not have the financial means to max out these accounts. 
and increasing the contribution limits too aggressively can further widen the retirement savings gap for high income earners and low income earners. So the government's primary focus is to get people to contribute to these plans rather than focusing on getting people to max them out. And limiting the increase in contribution limits to inflation helps to keep these policies more equitable across all income levels. And we can quickly touch on how many people actually max out these accounts. According to Fidelity, in the most recent full year, so 2023, 22% of individuals under the age of 50 maxed out their IRA, and 38% of individuals 50 and older maxed out their IRA, including catch-up contributions. And according to Vanguard, just 14% of individuals under the age of 50 maxed out their 401k and 12% 50 and older maxed out their 401k, including catch-up contributions. And I want to add my two cents here. If you're utilizing an IRA and you have the means to do so, if you can max out your IRA in the start of the year as opposed to at the end of the year, there's a good reason to do so. If you do that every single year over a 40 year working career, you could actually retire with an additional three or $400,000 in your account. And that's simply by investing earlier. By investing in January as opposed to December, you essentially get an additional year in your investments. You add an additional year to that compounding. Time in the market is what matters most. So if you can make it so that your money is invested for longer, that's a great way to stack the deck in your favor. So I'm a fan of getting your money invested as early as you possibly can and getting that money working for you. Now, on the other hand, if you invest throughout the entire year, the difference would be less profound. And I do wanna say that the takeaway from this should still be no matter when you invest, whether that's the beginning of the year, throughout the year, at the end of the year, so long as you're investing, that's the most important thing. It's really more of a micro thing to focus on when you're investing. Make sure that you are investing because that really matters more than anything else. What do you think about these changes, specifically those changes to the 401k? If you're age 60 through 63, do you think you're gonna take advantage of the higher catch-up contributions? Leave your thoughts in a comment down below. I post new videos every single week. If you got anything at all out of this one, please give it a like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing, or if you know of someone who might get something out of this type of content, please consider sharing. I'll see you soon, bye. That bird was on camera, wasn't it? Shh. Oh my goodness. Just shush. To qualify. Oh my goodness. Slow down. My stomach is so loud. <laughs> I think my stomach just messed up my filming. Also, oh my gosh, that airplane needs to go away.